What's good, my fellow nerds? So glad to see you again. It is I, your good friend, your Dungeons and Dragons buddy, Tard Kent, the man of Steelbook. It is I, the guy who yaps about new releases of movies that half the time he ain't even seen. Recently, Vinegar Syndrome had their subscriber week, and it was full of daily deals and sales, all that great stuff, as well as uh, announcements for their releases. So let's see if Vinegar Syndrome is going to get any of my money in September. We'll find out right now. I've been out in the sun all day, y'all. It's probably not going to be very pretty. I'm going to do my best. The first thing that I want to tell you about is a little film called Interrogation that's getting released to uh, Blu-ray. This is their Vinegar Syndrome Labs release. So this is kind of like their experimental release. It may not be exactly like other Vinegar Syndrome releases. So it's a little bit, I don't know, out of the norm of what you would expect from Vinegar Syndrome. That's sort of their way of telling me that there might not even be any titties in this movie. Maybe nobody gets stabbed or their dick ripped off by Sasquatch. It's a Polish film. It was made in 1982. I heard they weren't able to get like a good release on it until, I don't know, the dictatorial authoritarian Polish government of the 1980s fell. But regardless, it's a Polish film. It was made early, early 80s by, uh, directed by Ryszard Bujerzowski. I told y'all I've been in the sun all day. Riz, Rizard Bujajaski? Bujajaski? I don't know. I'm not Polish. I don't speak Polish. I speak eight languages, but not one of them is fucking Polish. So I'm sorry. This movie, though, is about uh, a broad who gets thrown into the can because she refuses to provide some falsely incriminating testimony on one of her colleagues or some shit, you know, they put the screws to her. They're like, hey, you're gonna sign this paper telling us that this bitch over here did some nasty shit so we can throw her in jail. And she's like, no, I ain't signing. And they're like, well, fine, we're gonna throw her, we're gonna throw you in jail instead. And it's sort of like, well, what's the whole, what's the whole point? I mean, if you're gonna have like secret police and jails and you're gonna throw people in the slammer without any kind of, without any kind of representation, any kind of trial. I mean, why do you need person A to sign a false report on person B if the threat against person A to sign that document is you're just going to throw them in the slammer? If you just want to throw person B in the slammer, then why do you even need person A to get involved? It seems like a completely unnecessary middleman in this world of tyranny. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Am I making sense to anybody besides myself? Because I have been in the sun. I got a lot of sun today. But I think the important thing is that um, that doesn't make any sense. Why throw the first broad in prison secretly if you really just want to throw the second broad in prison? Just throw the second broad in prison, right? If you got secret police anyway. So it's basically a documentary of Guantanamo Bay. I'm pretty sure George W. Bush and Dick Cheney made this required viewing for everybody admitted into the CIA, at least in the 21st century. Uh, we're also getting a nice little double feature. This is our first of two double features this month, uh, a release uh, of two Mexican films from the 1980s. One is Intrepidos Punks, and the other is Vengeance of the Punks. I get to practice my Spanish a little bit. See, I told you motherfuckers I speak eight languages, just not Polish. Intrepidos. You like that? Yeah, that's fucking good pronunciation. Even after being in the sun all day, I was outside. I was in the sun all day, splish splashing in the pool, grilling up hamburgers. I can still say intrepidos properly. Vinegar Syndrome is promising a feast of brutality topped off with an all out assault of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Those are their words. I'm quoting their website when I say that. Um, that makes me think two things. One, they seem like they know their audience. In fact, they have me pegged as fuck. Also, it seems like they say that about all of their movies. Like, I feel like you could just play like, uh, like roulette with the Vinegar Syndrome releases. Just pick a random release on their website and read the description and see if they promise you lots of uh, titties and stabbings. Because I feel like they kind of do that. Like 90% of the movies, they make such promises that there's going to be like, 
boobies and sex and drugs and rock and roll. Look, I there's brutality, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I love three of those things, and rock and roll is pretty cool too. Just saying. Uh, so this is a pair of films. They were both released in 87, and they do sound pretty crazy. I'll give them that. Uh, two movies for $33 is also not a terrible value proposition. You get two uh, full films, 33 bucks on Blu-ray. That's not bad. I don't know what else you might possibly want. And there is almost an hour of special features on, on the disc as well, I think, um, just under an hour. But there's no commentary. So, um, you know, that's too bad. Be nice if there was a commentary on there. Don't you guys have some cheap film historian you guys can pay to do a commentary? I'm here. I'll do a fucking commentary for a case of these. You don't even have to fucking pay me. Just send me the movie for free and a case of these. And I'm I'm ready to go. I'm raring. I will do a commentary on your film. Uh, so no commentary, but you know, you can bone up on your Spanish when you watch this film. And maybe you say intrepidos as well as I do. You know what I mean? One day you can also be as good at talking Spanish as this guy right here. This one is interesting. This next one I'm about to yap about is called Blood Cult. That's getting a Blu-ray release. This is Vinegar Syndrome's entry in their De Gosser line. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't speak French either, motherfucker. I think that's French. I don't know. It might be French-Canadian. De Gosser? I don't know. I don't know. De Gosser. I'm going to say it like that. And if I sound like an ignorant or an American, uh, I'm guessing the flip-flop fits. Because we don't wear shoes in these parts. It's summertime, dog. Um, so the De Gosser line is distinguished by operating uh, by offering films that are shot on video. So instead of, you know, standard film stock, like most movies uh, are shot in, especially most older films, like, you know, video wasn't really a technology that was widely available. I think a lot of these De Gosser films wind up being movies of the 80s and, and um, a little bit of the 90s, simply because that is the era when uh, shooting on video really became uh, possible. Anyway, Blood Cult is a 1985 film, and Vinegar Syndrome is uh, touting it as the first film ever made specifically for the home video market, which was booming, of course, in the mid-80s then. You have to imagine that they just needed, they needed content, right? I don't see what's not to love about Blood Cult. I mean, the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, this is a nice little gem. Um, it's obscure as fuck. Uh, more people have seen my dick than this movie, okay? <laughs> a fucking idiot. Uh, it's also got young college ladies being murdered by a satanic cult. It's got copious scenes of violence, or so I'm promised. See what Vinegar Syndrome does? See what they do? Hey, it's got sex and violence. Come buy it. Uh, there are also two commentary tracks and at least two hours of bonus content. So this one's really... Very chock full of bonus content. Uh, so you're really getting a lot of value for your money, which is nice. They're also putting this one out on VHS with one of those little light-up doohickeys. They put out 300 of these. For all the Degossa releases, Vinegar Syndrome does this. They put out 300 units on a VHS. I'm guessing it's like a working VHS. Like if you still have a VHS player, you could put this thing in your VCR and press play and... Watch the movie that way. I don't know anybody that still owns a VCR. I don't still own a VCR. Uh, but it seems like kind of a novelty. The little Because it's got a little case that lights up. It's like, do you need a light-up VHS? It's really kind of, it seems like a kitschy kind of novelty thing. Uh, and not something that people are going to legitimately watch on VHS format. When, when Blu-ray is being offered, I imagine the Blu-ray must look much, much better, uh, particularly if you've got a nice setup to view it on than the VHS would. I, I just, they seem to sell out fast too. I don't get it. Maybe it's because it is only 300. It's a mere 300 units. All Vinegar Syndrome has to do is find 300 idiots out there with more money than brains and, and they buy this shit. Uh, so it makes zero sense to me. It's not something I can wrap my head around currently. Um, I'm going to need to travel into the dense jungles of peru and do a lot of ayahuasca before my brain is that open my mind is that open to say like oh yeah vhs that sounds awesome let's spend 50 dollars on one of those because there's not uh fucking 45 movies on blu-ray and 4k that i'd like to buy uh the next film that i'm going to tell you about 
is a pretty wacky looking one as well. This one is called They Call Me Macho Woman. Uh, this is coming to Blu-ray. This, again, looks like another kind of crazy, kind of maybe in a more kooky way where Intrepidos Punks might go for like the more savagery. This seems maybe it's like a little bit more quirky, a little off the wall. Uh, 80s movie. So, you know, again, it's in my lane. This one seems a little bit more like an outraged action film than like Blood Cult is more like, you know, we're going to cut college girls' titties off. And I don't condone that, but I will watch it out of morbid curiosity. This film is just, it seems like just kind of an odd, like really oddball kind of action film. It was picked up by Troma for distribution um, back in the day when it was originally released. Uh, this film, They Call Me Macho Woman, boasts a drug-dealing gang of inbred thugs. Shout out to uh, my fam. Shout out uh, Inner Circle Podcast Network. You know, you think you're the only person that has a fucking crew of inbred th thugs? Try me, motherfucker. We got inbred thugs galore up in these parts. Come around my house unless you want to get inbred, all right? Uh, it looks to me like this movie sets you up with this kind of like timid, shy, blonde lady main character. She's from the city. She gets into a little bit of a scrape with the Almy family drug dealing mongoloids. And the audience is kind of set up to believe that she's kind of screwed, like she's in this situation that she could never possibly navigate herself out of, only for the twist to be that she's actually a highly trained assassin or some kind of half android killing machine or some shit like that. I don't know. Uh, except that the reveal of this twist is completely ruined by marketing. So I, I, hopefully that's not like what they're driving at. Like the first 45 minutes is you're thinking this like blonde lady is like works in an office as a stenographer or some shit like that. And she's never worn a pair of blue jeans in her life. And she's about to just get fucked up in the jungle only for her to like start snapping necks like Arnold Schwarzenegger or some shit. But oh, well, you know, they, they fucked that twist up and um, I'm here for it anyway. I like the idea of, uh, you know, a highly trained female assassin with blonde hair going up against a bunch of inbred mongoloids on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Go watch the trailer for this movie. It looks really kind of terrible in all the right ways. So I have to say I'm kind of interested in this one too. This one's kind of in my lane. Vinegar Syndrome might get some of my money on this one and Blood Cult. I got to say those are the two that I'm, I'm kind of a little warm feeling about in my deep in my gut. I got a good gut feeling about those two or it's all the hot dogs I've had today. Burnt the shit out of those hot dogs, by the way. And fucking things were black. My kids weren't touching them. My kids took one look at them hot dogs and say, Daddy, you fuck them things up. Eight Eyes is coming to Blu-ray from Vinegar Syndrome. Let's just pivot really abruptly. Eight Eyes is coming to Blu-ray. Um, this is actually a, the first film produced by Vinegar Syndrome. They actually had a hand in making this one um, during the production, which actually also tells you that it's a relatively newer film. I think they're saying it has a 2023 release date. So maybe it got some kind of limited um, theatrical, maybe a distribution uh, last year at a couple of art house cinemas or maybe a couple of, of um, film festivals. Uh, so despite being a brand new film, it has a very authentic 70s kind of low budget horror aesthetic, which is pretty nice. I actually like the aesthetic of this thing. Also, I'm told by Vinegar Syndrome that the gore effects were done by the guy who did them for a Serbian film. So there's that, a Serbian film being renowned, infamous, infamous. It's when you're more than famous for uh, some nasty shit, which I've heard goes down in a Serbian film. So there's that. The trailer looks sufficiently fucked up. I did watch the trailer with no pants on. Uh, the design of this packaging is the best part it's absolutely lit i don't know if you guys have seen please observe the design of the packaging i really dig it connects with my aesthetic sensibilities uh in a very complete and whole way i mean it's space docks my fucking aesthetic sensibilities uh it violates my aesthetic sensibilities in every way that i might possibly wish for um I, you know, if you bought this film based on this packaging alone, I would not blame you. I would not blame you at all uh, for making a blind buy just based off of that. I would put that poster up down here in the in the uh, the basement and the inbreeding room. We call it the inbreeding room. You know, you know what I'm saying. Blind buying off packaging is is actually how we have decided what we wanted to watch decades ago. When you went to a movie rental. 
place. I mean, you couldn't watch the trailer on YouTube. That didn't exist. You couldn't read re reviews online because those didn't exist either because the whole online thing was a problem. You All you had to go by when you went into the Blockbuster or wherever, you had, you had the VHS packaging. That was it. You could read the little synopsis on the back. You could look at a couple of pictures from the back. And then you had to be wowed by that cover art. And I will say, that does the trick. A 12-year-old critical crackhead would have begged my parents to rent this one for me. But they were on crack, too. I mean, it's how the inbreeding happens. I hate to spoil a trade secret like that. They're also releasing, Vinegar Syndrome here is also releasing a Chinese torture chamber story, parts one and two. This is the second double feature release that we're getting in September from, from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. This is being released to Blu-ray. Um, and so again, you get two movies for a uh, cool 33 bucks. It's not half bad, you know? Uh, it's not really bad at all. Getting uh, two movies on Blu-ray for 33 bucks with some special features, you know, it's hard to it's hard to complain about that value. That's a good value, guys. I think I just pre-ordered The Hitcher for like 60 bucks, and that's one movie. My wife, I hope she didn't hear me just say that. I hope she's not watching this. Again, Vinegar Syndrome is setting the bar high with a, a Chinese torture chamber story. Parts one and two. They're setting the bar very high with these promises of explicit sex and extreme violence. I'm using their wording. Explicit sex and extreme wording were the word combinations that Vinegar Syndrome chose to use on their website. That is not my insane ramblings, okay? If you see somebody, you come over to somebody's house and you see in their movie collection, if you see somebody got a lot of fucking Vinegar Syndrome releases on their shelf, you know they into some wild shit. And maybe don't accept a beverage from them. If they they go over to their wet bar, I'm pointing, I have a wet bar down here. They're, if they go over to their wet bar and start mixing some shit up and looking at you like Bill Cosby, don't accept that beverage because you know what that motherfucker's into. You saw they got at least a dozen Vinegar Syndrome films, okay? And there's something fizzing at the bottom of that drink. That's not an Alka-Seltzer motherfucker. You're going to wake up with your boxes on backwards. Um, this movie, or movies, I should say, Chinese Torture Chamber Story uh, 1 and 2. That almost is like, doesn't want to come out. Uh, the, these two movies, supposedly, according to Vin Vinegar Syndrome, have wall-to-wall -wall sex and violence. That's all Vinegar Syndrome. And again, what are they promising? Every single fucking release, except for interrogation. There's no titties in that movie. But every other movie, Vinegar Syndrome is like, sex and violence, sex and violence. I mean, you know. I'm starting to notice a pattern with Vinegar Syndrome releases that they tend to be marketed on the whole, like, yeah, it's cool. It's like blood and tits. And, you know, this is one lady, you can see her bush. That's fucking wild. There's some Chinese broads in this fucking movie. I should do this. I should do it this way and actually motion towards the film. There's some Chinese broads in this movie, man. They get butt naked, man. Wow. They got them Chinese bushes, man. Shit. Um, which I don't, I don't understand how Chinese pubes would be any different than, you know, Western pubes like american or canadian pubes i'm not sure i don't know but uh you know imagine what you want to imagine uh, or maybe google it look it up these movies are a little bit more recent 1994 and 1998 respectively and in the first film the main character uh, girl's name is little cabbage so that's kind of interesting as well i love when they do like the direct translation of the chinese name like, you know, her name in Chinese is not Little Cabbage, right? I mean, it's, it translates to Little Cabbage when you bring it over to English, but it's like Ching Pei or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like the words that come out of their mouth. You could just translate it as like Ching Pei. Like, oh, her name is Ching Pei. But they're like, no, nah, 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 we're going to go one step further. We're going to translate it as Little Cabbage because that's technically what the fucking kanji in her name, those ideograms technically indicate that fucking her name is Little Cabbage, which I love. I love the idea of giving your kids some fucking wild name like Little Cabbage. Would you name your kid John? Fuck that shit. Fucking name my kid fucking big ass Brussels sprout. <laughs> I name my kid fucking stinky asparagus because, man, when I eat asparagus, I fucking, that pee smells bad. Reptilicus is coming out. Booyah! Reptilicus is coming out 4K and Blu ray, three disc set for $38. That's with a 4K release. So it's not terrible but like also oof, that's almost 40 bucks for one 
motherfucking movie. Shit. As a bonus feature, it does include the longer 95-minute Danish version of the movie. So it's like you get two different versions of the same movie. So like maybe it's more like uh, one and a half movies for almost $40. It's still like it's a lot of m money for like one and a half movie. Um, it's a 1961 film, some kind of kaiju movie. It looks really bad. I'm going to say I watched the trailer. And the, the effects look very, very like whatever's below practical, you know what I mean? Like it's very practical. Uh, so, you know, I'm no, I'm no expert on that genre of film, like the kaiju, the giant monster shit. I'm not an expert on that genre of film. I've only dibbled and dabbled a little bit. Um, but you know, if you're into that kind of thing, then this might be your jam and it might be well worth it for you to spend 40 bucks on one and a half movies. But I may take a pass on this one just to, you know, Choke myself out while watching uh, Blood Cult again, because that one sounds like. <laughs> yeah, put the belt around your neck, Jay. Last Embrace is coming to 4K and Blu-ray. That is the cinematograph release for September. I said that okay, right? It feels like I said cinematograph, all right? Well, this is a 1979 film. It was directed by the man who did Silence of the Lambs. That's a big movie you should have heard of. His name is Jonathan Demme. Uh, so he's the guy who directed Silence of the Lambs. He directed this film some, I don't know, 14 years before Silence of the Lambs. This film, Last Embrace, also stars Roy the Fuck Scheider from motherfucking Jaws and Numb. So uh, he's kind of a big deal, at least as far as 70s movies go. Roy Scheider, man, he's a big deal. Apparently... This film, Last Embrace, is some kind of blend of spy movie with erotic thriller, maybe kind of in the vein of a film like Basic Instinct. So Vinegar Syndrome is kind of saying, like, this movie obviously predates something like Basic Instinct by, you know, 12, 12-ish, 12 12 -ish years, something like that, 13 maybe. And so what they're saying is maybe this film had some formative influence on those films that were yet to come, films like Basic Instinct that have that thriller, that element of danger, but also they also include Sharon Stone's uh, labia, Majora at least, and not maybe the inside, but like the outside. You get to see the outside. You know, Christopher Walken's in this bitch for a stint too. He's he features prominently in Vinegar Syndrome's um, trailer and a couple of lines of dialogue delivered by a younger, you know, 1979 Christopher Walken. I was like, dude, I'm in, man. I love it. I, there's a commentary track, as one would hope. There's also a video essay and an archival interview with the producer. Uh, but even with that, the downside of this release feels like it's a little bit light on supplemental content, especially when you compare it to other cinematograph releases. So take Little Darlings, for example. Little Darlings has two commentary tracks plus alternate scenes with commentary. It's got an hour-long interview with the director as well as another video essay. So, you know, in that context, it really feels like Last Embrace has about half the special features that you would have gotten in some of these other cinematograph releases. So that's a bit of a bummer, but um, it is what it is. You know? Go buy the motherfucker. Uh, it's going to be a disappointment for people who really want to have like three commentary tracks, but but it is what it is. I think it's a it's a small minority of people who watch the commentary tracks anyway on maybe all but their most beloved films. Like you have a thousand movies. Imagine you have a thousand films behind you. You have a thousand movies behind you, and let's say a high percentage of those films, maybe eighty percent contain you know the release contains a audio commentary track because not all movies come with them so most movies do and most movies over the last several decades of release they do have some form of commentary on one or more of the releases so maybe 80 percent of your movies that's about 800 movies that have commentaries i would wager that people have maybe 10 maybe a dozen films out of their thousand that they really just love the shit out of. It's just their, you know, their, their short list of absolute favorite films of all time. Those are the movies that people have seen the commentaries that people actually bother to watch the commentary tracks, but you're not watching the commentary tracks for 800 movies. You're not doing it. Nobody's doing it. So 
I don't think people actually do. So you can complain that this movie only has one commentary track on this release, but you know, are you actually going to watch the motherfucker? Because I don't think you is. And if you is, you ain't watching two commentary tracks. Who's watching two commentary tracks? Hit me up in the comments below. If you got little darlings and you watch both them commentary tracks, hit me up in, in the comments below. I'm going to make you prove it. But I, I wanna I wanna know you. I wanna know who you are. I wanna know why the fuck you watching commentary tracks when you got 800 motherfucking movies to watch. You got too many movies to watch to be watching a movie and then watching it again with commentary track. And I'm gonna tell you, you're a savage if you watch a movie for the first time with a commentary track. You ain't never seen that movie before. You blind bought that bitch and you put it in and watch the commentary before you even watch the movie. You ain't even hearing the dialogue. Anyway, all in all, uh, this film does seem to live up to the cinematograph charter, and it does look pretty cool. I mean, if it's I like the spy movies. I got the James Bonds back there. I like, I mean, obviously I like erotic thrillers. Erotic anything, really. I mean, I'm fucking, I, if Little Cabbage can be erotic, guess what? So can Last Embrace. So go out and buy these motherfucking movies. Let me know what you think. Uh, go spend some money on some Vinegar Syndrome. Shit. Peace, motherfuckers.